witch folk. We are Angels on Broomsticks. We're a mother-daughter duo. I'm Kristen. And I'm Evangeline. And we're here to have fun with makeup and sometimes witchcraft. Today it's Midnight Margaritas. Margaritas. Inspired, inspired by the iconic scene from Practical Magic. We're already a couple in. And today we're using something really exciting. The Pat McGrath Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity Palette. Ooh, she pretty. <laughs> she glittery. Gonna have a black lip, obviously. And something else. Bye bye. Better What's here? Lashes. I've got a lash on. I don't have ever lashes on. So if you want to see how we got here, and here's chat about the show Bewitched, then keep on watching. <laughs> Okay, so we don't have our complexions on yet, but we I've done my eyebrows. Um, no. So we're just going to go forth and conquer. Did you get anything at the Sephora sale? <laughs> <laughs> so who didn't get something at the Sephora sale? I did, but nothing, nothing fun or interesting. Did you? Yes, I did. Uh, I got the Melt palette, the 420. Oh, well, durr. Durr. I was just pretending I didn't know. <laughs> I did get the Fenty Cream Blush, so I'm going to be using that um, later on. So. Oh yes, I did get the MAC Bouncy Blush of yours that I'm so obsessed with, but I got it in a different color. I love the color. Yeah, it's like purpley, pinky, super bold. I'm going to use that today. These um, margaritas may are hard on my little lips. <laughs> the salt? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cheers. Yeah, so what I want to kind of talk about today, what is going to inspire my look, is the TV show Bewitched. Yeah. Which <laughs> I've never seen. So, I, I looked up a couple clips when you were saying that you wanted to talk about it. Um, but who, who's inspiring you? Um, the show? So, well, first of all, it was a show of my childhood. So the show aired in 1964 to 1972. And so I was not cognitive yeah. to watch it when it was coming on the air naturally, but it was that show that you watched after school at mm -hmm. four o'clock. Like there was Gilligan's Island, which was a like painful, painful. <laughs> it was only three seasons long. And I was like, oh, how God. long can you watch Gilligan go off the island, like try and go <laughs> off the island? But like Bewitch was so different. It was like... It wasn't a comedy of errors per se, like which is another thing. Even as a child, would annoy a four-year-old child. <laughs> no, I was older, like when when I started watching. Right. But it's like you can't watch that comedy of errors like over and over. But mm -hmm. you could watch. There was something about Bewitched you could watch over and over because it was just the, the characters are so delightful and um, wacky. Like I don't know now, like. If, as an adult, I would have liked that show, but, mm -hmm. it, you know, it came on during the 60s and, you know, in the 70s. So it was basically about Samantha, who was married to Darren, who was like Don Draper, but goofy. But <laughs> I looked at a clip. I was like, who is this guy? He's a old AF. No, he isn't. He looks old AF to me. Well, that's because... Like, people didn't age well. No, back. they didn't, clearly, because so, he... Well, well, the whole polarizing thing about Bewitch was there were two Darrens yeah. because Dick York uh, had suffered a back injury in another movie that he made earlier on, and so he couldn't continue his role. Yeah. So they brought in another Darren. So everybody was like, who do you like better, Darren 1 or Darren 2? Who did like, you like better? Well... Looking back, I like Darren one better because he's like goofy, like kind of like Jim Carrey, rubber face. He looked like Jim Carrey. Yeah, I, I was. Which who that. I find I would like I would go there. Should bone call me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he was goofy, and then the new Darren was really kind of by then angered and like oh. they were big into the the mean mother-in-law jokes were a thing yeah. because Samantha's mother was a witch. As well as Samantha. 
And she used to like interrupt them all the time and just come in like and turn him into a goat or something, whatever, <laughs> all kinds of spells. But the, the whole premise of the show was Darren didn't want Samantha to use her witchcraft. And yeah. she agreed, like she fell in love with him. And so one of the things was she was a compliant housewife yeah. to his, you know, I make the money. But at the time, Betty Friedan's book came out in 1963, so a year before the show started to air, and that was The Feminine Mystique. And the woman's movement was really starting to take on another revolution, and she was sort of pioneering it. And her take on it was, for some people, quite harsh, in that women had to be like men. So um, Samantha's mom, Andorra, was like salty like that, like, why do you want to do any like housework and all? So that was the constant theme of the show. Well, I feel like that time, you, you think of a 60s housewife, but it's like a, a very I iconic imagery. And you think of sort, you do think repression right away. But I think that was a time when like these ideas of feminism were starting to open up that you don't have to be a housewife. And I think now we're at a point in feminism where it's like, well, you can be if you want to, but it was almost like this opposing forces. And I saw this video today about Bewitched and that the mum sort of, yeah, represents that more harsh, vigilant feminism that's like rejecting all traditional domestic feminine ideals. And then Samantha's the one who's making the choice because and she then, wants to be. And the, and other characters who came around was Serena, who was played by the same actress, Elizabeth Montgomery, as the, like, the hippie, free-loving, free-spirit feminist. So there was a thing, like, I read about, like, is Samantha a feminist? Because she was so compliant to her husband. Yeah. As a child watching it, like, my take on it was, like, lose that motherfucker. Like, yeah. why are you... You know, be a witch. Like, so I think that's how it was supposed to be presented. Like, we were on her side, mm. but not on her side as, you know, being stifled by her husband. Yeah. We're not on the side of Darren. We he, we think he's a big fucking goofball. Yeah, but that's true. Like, no. they knew what they were doing. Yeah, probably. I think so. That's my take. But, um... All that to say, so whose makeup are you emanating today? Oh, well, I was thinking, because I was thinking of the show so hard, mm -hmm. like a modern-day Andorra, who will, looks like this. <laughs> um, she, she has the winged eyeliner and, like, the crazy, crazy blue. Because um, I'm in my Andorra years. You like, are. I'm no longer an ingenue. You're no longer an ingenue. What's an ingenue? A freaking 19 year old. Oh, yeah, Emily no type. longer a tiny little Lolita No, you're child. like you're like in your Samantha years. You don't have to do a Samantha look, but no. Um, I'm gonna do an Andorra, modern Andorra, how she would nice. look today. Samantha had a, a daughter as well named Tabitha. Oh, I like that and name. And she was, um, she turned out to be a baby witch. Nice, but at the toward the end of the show, she had a son named Adam. He could have been a warlock. He could have, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I think that was the thing. Is he a warlock? Like, it was just so stupid. It was almost like a, you know, Darren, I hope he's not a warlock or whatever. Like, oh, fuck yourself, Darren. Sorry. <laughs> well, here's a question for you about that show. Did your mom watch it? Did your dad no. watch it? Oh, my dad, no. God, no. No, because no, when we watched it, it was like um, after school at four. Mm. And my dad hated it. Oh, and by the time it was 5.30, it was Partridge Family. <laughs> the best. Not the best. Bewitched was the best. But it was Partridge Family, and he got home around then, and oh, did he not like that show. <laughs> and I had to run downstairs to finish watching it. Oh, my God. It was so upsetting. Because I was just wondering <laughs> if Mamu, that's, yeah. what, that's what we call my grandma, <laughs> if she, yeah, what she would have thought of it, because she was a 1960s housewife. Yeah, yeah, I don't mm. think she was. Because I think it was for, like, maybe made for younger people. Yeah. I don't know. Like, did people think critically about things as much as they do now? Yeah, I just <laughs> feel like shows these days, uh, they're just always doing better. Better and better and better, just, like, with their representation and with their... 
Yeah, just for everything. Sure. So what I think about the archetype of a witch, which we like to talk about here a lot, um, that show seems like it was maybe one of the first shows to introduce the idea of the witches not being... Like, think of the Wicked Witch of the West in Wizard of Oz. That iconic the show is, image. By the way, though, what? based on a, a movie. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, this was a time, I, I believe, when you're starting to introduce the idea of a witch as something that could be in a domestic setting. Like, a woman who has powers that can almost take her beyond her, her means, her, her domestic role but also at the same time coincide with it. And I think if you look at your if you look at your witches through time, we see it progressing in the same way we see like our feminism progressing. Like witch shows now like chill I say this all the time. Chilling Adventures yeah. of Sabrina, but like having people of color being witches, not depicting voodoo and hoodoo magic as being super dark. It's like we're starting to open up ideas of feminism in the same way we're opening up our archetypes of our witches. They all go hand in hand. Uh, good point. They really do. Look at your witches and that will tell you about your women. Pam Grossman taught me that. Who? Oh, your yeah, witch lady. My yeah. witch lady. Oh, that's She's awesome. That's just what the, the archetype of the witch does. It tells you about how your society's viewing your women those days. So yeah, that was the time when it, it all began. It all started. Women started having choices. One with the eyes, y'all. On with the eyes. Ooh, that was sweet, Margarita. <laughs> I don't know why there's a ribbon here. To look like a book. To look like a no, book. No, 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 it's not a book, never mind. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't do it doesn't anything do at all. Anything. Okay. okay. All right, Jess, um, I'm going to dive into some purple. And Dora wears a lot of blue, but I, I don't have blue right now. Yeah, blue super us. 60s. We're gonna Wait, do, you 60, know what? Yeah. We're gonna do a blue eye look coming up. Yeah. We'll do a whole blue. I love blue. I love it. All the colors of the rainbow. I just don't know where to begin here. I'm going green to purple. It almost reminds me of Barney, but. I'm gonna start differently. I'm challenging it's myself here. Barney? Barney? Wasn't he purple and green? And so is Beetlejuice, by the way. Yeah. That melt palette thing yeah. I might have to get. I'm not feeling the brush already. I'm gonna put it in my finger. This actually comes out black. It's a purple color, but on yeah. the pan, but it looks black. I'm excited to do blues, and that reminds me, you're saying, and Dora uses a lot of blues. It's like the Love Witch movie, which is filmed now, but based in the 1960s. She's oh my God, got the blues you the guys greens. have to watch this movie called The Love Witch. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, like an indie film. No, this is a must watch. <laughs> and it's a take on 1960s, what do they call them? Exploitation films. Uh, and it's about this woman who's a witch and she, what's her shtick? She basically wants to fall in love with men and wants men to love her and just find the man for her, but she like goes through men like there's no tomorrow in terms of she kills them and she puts them on puts spells Is on it a them. It's a comedy. It it's so weird because it's almost a comedy, but at the it's same not that time, funny. it's not mm -hmm. funny. But it's so funny you can't laugh. Yeah. You're like, yeah, you're just what like, am I watching? This is, I I wish people would make more things like that. I know. But it's also, I feel like you're not sure, is this feminist or anti-feminist? And I feel like because it's... Because she's mean. She's mean ultimately. and she also, at the end of the day, wants just to have a man to love her. And that's all she her goal is. But I think so in being I, so anti-feminist, it actually is feminist. Does that make sense? It, it knows that it is being anti-feminist. It's self-aware. Yes, exactly. It is so great. So weird. I want to do a look inspired by that movie. Okay. We will right definitely, now? No. Oh. No, there's no blues. Oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I'm already not sure about this. <laughs> <sighs> but, guys, it's Midnight Murder. Yeah, we don't care. Sometimes we will fail, and you got to be there with us. <laughs> and also, sometimes when you see it like being done, you're like, holy. Yeah. How are you going to save that? Oh. It's called blending. <laughs> Am I right? 
It is cold blood, dude. It's so true. Sometimes you want to lay the color down first and then yeah, sort and then, out your blend. Yeah, sort out where the others go. Problem with this particular palette is there's not enough mattes. Yeah. Matte shades are like kind of what tame everything. To be honest, there's sort of this thing in the beauty community where people complain about not having enough mattes, but I see a shimmer palette in. <gasps> Me too! I, I, those beauty people who don't like a glitter? And what are what you? Are you? Who are you? Where would you come from? Oh, you know, today also we're going to do false eyelashes on me. I mean, she's doing them all the time now. Are we not concentrating? <laughs> not really. I'm doing something different in that I'm putting a lighter shade on my whole lid. Like, I'm almost cutting a crease without the work of some kind of concealer. Like, you know how the 60s? Mm -hmm. I am doing a 60s inspired... Oh. <laughs> we always sort it out at the end. Yeah, we sort it out at the end. I might have to bring in another palette. Uh, another Pat McGraw palette? I, brought, I did bring one with us. I brought her. She's, she's here. She's here. Is that your wolfhound? This is my wolfhound. I slept with her by my bed when I first bought her. And she, she slept beside me like she was protecting her princess. <laughs> And I kept her in her box, in her original beautiful packaging box, but I spilt wine on her. <laughs> anyway, she hasn't been open since 2019, so shh. Welcome to the world. She doesn't know what COVID is. <laughs> she doesn't know there's a pandemic. Aww, we have some news for you. Sorry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so she's here. She's here. I'll show you. She's, you've seen her before. But this one is mine. She's the Mothership Five. So I think she might save the day. Mm, with her mats? My, yeah, well, not just her mats, but like, I think she's got like, the shimmers in here are really beautiful. But there's like super sparkly, like I could really kind of work with this to make something better happen to what I just did. And yes, a matte, a purple matte. Yeah, I think this might work out. I mean, it might not be where I go to the grocery store, but... Oh. Okay, oh. I am not bold enough now. I, I worked on the blend. I tried, but now, oof, there's nothing going on. Okay, I have a thing. Okay, following the shape of my brow, and maybe if Robert Welsh will ever be watching this. <gasps> Robert Welsh, calling <laughs> Robert Welsh um, my shape of my brow. How should it, if I ever did a wing out, like am I am I competing? Is there a geometry lesson I need? <laughs> competing with the upward angle of it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're. I love how your brows allow all this real estate here. Do yours? Yes. You think not like yours? No, not at all. Like mine. <laughs> okay, I'm just packing this glitter on because it's midnight margaritas. Speaking of Midnight Margaritas, Practical Magic was another one of those shows where you have the witches and one's more domestic and rejecting magic, um, and another one who's more wild and all about her magic. There's always this uh, tension represented. Did you end up watching Midnight Margaritas? I did. Oh, I God. did. We, we saw it on the W Network many years ago, of course. Until the oh, W Network shit. went to shit. And now it's all Christmas. Christmas movies, Hallmark movies. Oh. It's bad news bears. Did you, speak of which, do you know even what you referenced? No. 70s movies. No, it's bad, bad news, news bears. bears. It's a 70s movie. That's a movie? Yeah, Title? with uh, Tatum O'Neill. It's the best. That's a feminist movie. Yeah? Because she played in Little League. She's a girl. Like, she's my age now, Tatum O'Neill. She got on the team, and they were the Bad News Bears. Oh, oh it's a team name. Mm -hmm. No, I've always said Bad News Bears. I don't even... Cause you it's... got it from Mom. <gasps> Mom. Oh, you say Bad News Bears? Yes. That's where it came from? 
Yes. Oh. Should I do a wing with this? Is that yeah, a bad idea? We all should do wings. Look oh. at this. I made a mess. I made a mess. I made a mess. <laughs> I fixed the mess. I fixed the mess. You know how we always do our foundation? First. First, because we don't like looking at our... Yes. Um, like unmowed lawn, you know, when we're planting the flowers. That is um, such a good <laughs> analogy. So... I'm going to just add a little bit of concealer. Okay, I'm just about to wrap this up. I'm going to put on a black liner because if I'm putting on lashes, I, I want the band to... Okay, I'll do the same. People. People. We lashes. Have, we have a confession, though. What? We went off camera for a second. Oh, and we did. Uh, we tweaked. We tweaked. This is the part is exciting. I'm gonna put on false lashes. And we're gonna do our mascara. It's not my first lashes. time because on Halloween I did it. Mm. But I did it. I made it particularly messy because I had a messy yeah. look. It was cute. We're gonna do when we do our lashes. In my case, I don't know about yours, but I cut the lashes. Half lash. I'm only doing a half lash because I'm a baby. I'm of a generation you'd think. I would have worn lashes, but I'm just young enough that it wasn't about lashes when I became right. of age. My older sister wore lashes. You were saying she wore them under her eyes. Yeah, even the lower lash line lashes. That's amazing. And so we see you. Okay, here's the thing I've already learned about lashes. Grab it closer to the base. If you okay. grab it farther away, you're just going to have so much trouble because oh, it's going to want to do its yeah. own thing. Okay. Which side do I do the longer side toward the end? Of course. Of course. But you have to let this glue dry, and that's the most boring part of the day. This is the time where we meditate. And now, oh, here's a trick I learned from Jamie Genevieve. Um, with the glue still, still kind of wet, just do a test mm. kind of press. So now you have glue on your lash line that's gonna get a bit tacky as well. And wait a sec, and then put it on because, yeah, they work together. How are you doing? I did my rotten eye first. Your rotten eye. <gasps> I should start doing that. The other side first. I think I got it. Does anybody here wear false lashes? If so, can you please re make some recommendations? I like my look thus far. Thus far. Oh, we're doing it, our lips, so. Yes, we're doing something different today. We're going black. We're going black. Black magic. First, yeah. I'm going to go in with a very dark brown liner. Me too. First. Okay, I've never worn black lipstick in my life. In your whole life? In my whole life. No. But I got it in the Sephora sale. This, these Fenty lipsticks are the best. What are they called? Mademoiselle plush? Mademoiselle. What is it? Oh, so it's black. What it's black it? and shimmery. It's the Kat Von D <laughs> wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. Okay, we're good. I'm good. I'm done. I don't care. I'm done. I don't care. Woo! Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I want to put my earrings on. Okay, we did it. We did, we did it. it. We're here. We've arrived. What do you think? This is intense. This is intense, and we are intense. Gothic. I like it. It's you fun. Think? Why not? Yeah. I love you. I love it. I love the black lips. Do we look like witches? I think so. This, this is, is witchly. I think this is modern 
which so this is what midnight margaritas is for just doing something bold and different and fun and experimenting with different colors yeah if it doesn't work it doesn't work would it and that's okay mm, yeah it's fine it's not a day of a total waste of makeup no this was a fine waste of makeup <laughs> so this is the end the end of the margaritas Cheers. Cheers for now. Cheers for now. See you in the next video. Bye, witches. Bye. Oh my god, what's wrong with me? It's all fine. We're it's so all fine. Drunk. It's all drunk. fine. Okay. Stay tuned. Watch. Watch. <laughs> yeah. I'm so worried. <laughs> no worries. <laughs>